The bag was turning into us. We have possession of the bag. Yes, sir. We have evidence <coughs> that says it came out of your storage room. Is that true? Yes, sir. The relationship between Matthew Boynton and Jessica Lester was full of red flags from the beginning. Jessica, abandoned by her parents as a small child, was grateful that a handsome, popular boy would even be interested in her, a fact that Boynton used to his advantage. When she became pregnant at 16, the two moved in together and Matthew began to cut her off from her family, claiming that they were not blood related. Matthew followed his lifelong dream of becoming a police officer and was known for his intense nature and inflexibility. In a desperate attempt at some sort of freedom, Jessica had an affair which resulted in a pregnancy. Uncharacteristically, Matt said he would raise the child as his own, and the two were married soon after. Less than six months after the marriage, Matthew began his own affair, which he took no trouble to hide. The relationship crumbled and Jessica asked for a divorce. After a fight at Walmart, the couple returned home and half an hour later, a neighbor heard the gunshots. The neighbor went to her window, where she saw Matthew quickly leave the house and get in his truck. After a stop at the Waffle Hut with a fellow officer, he received a text, supposedly from Jessica, indicating she was going to take her life. After sending a casual text to his girlfriend, he called for emergency services and then headed home. Can you please dispatch a unit out to my uh, location? To me, reference uh, to my wife. Um, I left the location. I'm, I'm back and around on Carver Road now. I'll be back there in about two minutes. Uh, she's having suicidal thoughts. My kids are at home with her, so I'm trying to hurry up and get back there. I'm driving. She just said that she's been experiencing suicidal thoughts right now. She told me to take care of the boys. So I'm trying to hurry up and get back home just to make sure that nothing's going to happen to them. Any weapons inside the house? Uh, just my service weapons. Jessica was found in the closet with gunshot wounds to her head. While it was first labeled a suicide, Jessica defied the odds and lived. There was a short, sham investigation filled with cover-ups and inconsistencies, which resulted in Matthew walking away free and Jessica losing custody of her sons. Things might have ended there if Matthew had not gotten involved with another woman who discovered a bag of Jessica's belongings, the very same belongings that Matthew had claimed in a sworn statement that he no longer possessed. Matthew, I'm just going to start off by letting you know that, that I am not conducting an, an internal investigation on you, okay? okay? So Gary is not implied. Okay. Okay, I want you to understand that, all right? Okay. All right, Gary does not apply to this incident, okay? Can you fully explain what that? I understand part of it, just... She's going to read, she's going to read you Miranda. Okay. So, I just want to let you know that we're not, I'm not conducting, I know I do IAs, but this yeah. is not an IA, this is a reference to a criminal investigation, okay? Okay. The detective starts out assuring Boynton that he isn't going to be conducting an internal investigation. Given the history of this case and the fact that Boynton is the sheriff's grandson, this is unethical, but sadly unsurprising. What's that in reference to? It's in reference to, you remember the um, statement you wrote me about Jessica saying you took items from the house? Yeah, the computer, yeah. That's what it's going to be in reference to. Okay. So what's the time? 1722. How old are you, Matthew? 21. <coughs> what was your current address? Uh, 130 LeMay Road. Spell that for me. L-O-U-M-A-E. Is that Griffin? Yes, man, it's Galley. Two, two, four. All right. And what's the last grade you completed in school? I uh, graduated high school. Okay. okay. All right. Well, this is the way, uh, Miranda waiver. We'll read everybody before we talk to them. Mm -hmm. It's just got today's date is 727 to 17. The time is 1722. We're in CID. Your name is Matthew Boynton. Uh, you're age 21. 
you live at 130 Lee May Road, Griffin. Uh, you completed the 12th grade school. And that you know that myself, Kay Yancey, and Jay Hayes are officers with the Griffin Police Department. And we're going to advise you that you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that? Anything I say can be used against me in a court of law. Do you understand that? I have the right to talk to a lawyer and have a president with me while I'm being questioned. Do you understand that? If I cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent me before any question if I wish. Do you understand that? I can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand that? It says I understand my rights and having these rights in mind, I'm now willing to talk about items that belong to Jessica. Uh, I've not been threatened. I've not been promised anything. I've not been forced in any way to answer any questions or make any statements. Okay? If you want to talk to us, just sign right there. All right. So Jessica came in. She filed a report. Um, okay. I talked to you about it. Uh, you wrote a statement saying you didn't have any of her items. Um, right. The report specifically said her retainer and stuff like that and clothes. Okay. Um, do you know anything about where her clothes or retainer might have been? Like I told her before, the only thing that we might have had would have been in that white trailer, and my stepdad has not mentioned anything else being in there. When asked about having her computer and other items, Boynton lies and says he never had them, and the police have to know he is lying because a bag belonging to Jessica has been obtained by Boynton's girlfriend and a private investigator. We gave everything back that we had because she had put some stuff in like a uh, it's like a little foot chase thing. Mm -hmm. We opened up, it's got two little boxes. I think we used to use it for like diapers and stuff now, but I mean, everything that she had that I knew of was gone. I got rid of everything I knew of. You got rid of a house, so. Yeah, either give back to her or her family came back and got it. You know, like she had a big kitchen table and some other stuff that her Aunt Kathy and Uncle Tim would come and got. Um, just different. I think my stepdad actually took a whole bunch of stuff over to her grandparents' house at 2464 East Milner mm -hmm. in Pike, which is like right by my parents' house. Okay. So, when did you move to Lou May Road? Uh, that would be sometime in March. March? Mm -hmm. uh, through the course of that move, did you find anything that belonged to her at that no. point? No, because if I would have, I would have turned it over to her, because I have no need to keep her stuff. The only thing I had at that point was that computer, and me and you had talked about that and gave it back to her, because mm -hmm. she could let her and talk to Bird. Okay. So, do you recognize that bag? Yes, yeah, that bag that Jessica let me use to put all my gym stuff in when we, we used to be together. Okay. So, when's the last time you saw that bag? Uh, it's been a long time. <coughs> like I said, I, when I used to work out at, um, there's two gyms in Thomaston. I don't remember the name of it. I used that one, and I had a uh, gray Nike bag I used to work out in. Um, so I interchange my stuff like protein drinks, um, powder shakes like pre-workout, uh, workout shorts, pants, sh shoes, whatever. I'd put it in that bag or my Nike bag. So when's the last time that you saw that bag? I mean, I, it's been a while. I don't, I don't know an exact date. I don't know. Um, I think my stepdad, he he had it in the I think the white trailer, and that that's been a while. And he brought it, but I haven't been through it or anything. Um, he put it in my storage, put it in my storage thing in my house, which is like when you pull in the driveway. Mm -hmm. It's a little storage thing on the right. You open the door and it's got all my stuff in there. I declared that some of it out recently. That was tossed in there, but I mean, it's in there with a bunch of my stuff, like a brown tub. I used to keep in my old patrol car with gym mm -hmm. stuff in it and work stuff. Would so, that be the utility room or carport room at your new house? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I keep, like, or I, well, I keep stuff in that, and I keep stuff in, like, what's considered an office and left the back of my house. Mm -hmm. so, I just toss it over the rest of my job. <clears throat> but it's just old gym bag. Boynton claims that while the bag belongs to Jessica, he used to use it as a gym bag and hasn't seen it in a long time, and that it might have been in his storage shed. He is still unaware that his girlfriend will be able to disprove his statement. No, 
known you a long time. Yes, sir. This bag, you saw it moving when you moved from your apartment to the main road. I didn't know. And, and, and your stepdad, and Wendell. Wendell saw it. And another female saw it. All right? Okay. At the house, in the apartments, just for now. When you um, moved from the apartment. When I, when I moved, like I said, I had all my stuff in the white trailer. That's, Matthew, that's, that's, not, that's not what I'm asking you. When y'all were in the process of moving, and you moved into the house that you're at now, your residence, did you or did you not see this bag? Yes, sir. It was in my storage room, in the, in the garage. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, why would I be holding a picture of this bag? I guess because Jessica wrote it into you. Why would Jessica have it if you had it at your house? Um, I don't know. I guess somebody got it from my garage or <clears> my shed. Who would have gotten it? Um, there's a couple of people. Okay. I don't know. All right. Exactly who. Okay. With obvious reluctance, Detective Hayes tells Boynton that he knows his story isn't true. He asks again if Boynton has seen the bag in his new house. The next lie is clumsy. He says that someone else must have put it there, a claim that most police have heard so often that they almost automatically believe it to be a lie. And inside that bag, there were numerous contents inside of it. And one of those is this right here. You know what this is? It's like Jessica's old retainer thing. Mm -hmm. She had them wear together. Right. The bag was completely filled with female clothes. And this is one photo of it. That's not yours. No. No. All right? No, sir. Okay. That's not yours. No, sir. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. Who did that belong to? This guy, Jessica's name, wants to be Jessica's retainer thing. <clears throat> if it was in that, if it was in this right here, where would that have been at? Uh, I had all of her stuff in it. In my, what would it have been at? It would have been in my the garage thing, like I said. In, which is where? Which is at my house. Which is at your house. Yes, sir. Did you buy that for Jessica? I don't recall. I don't think I did. Because she had... I think her grandparents did. Because she had retainers before she met you, right? Before y'all got married, right? I believe so. So that would make it whose property? Uh, hers. Not yours, right? Right. Yes, sir. Whose bag is that? Uh, Jessica's. And the contents in the bag? It's got all her stuff in it. So why would you not have brought that to us when you noticed, when you saw the bag at moving? Sarge, I promise I've not been through that bag. The last time I used Matthew, that bag I was for this. I didn't ask you that, Matthew. Listen to me, buddy. Who's bag is this? I understand what you're saying. It's just because I'm not sure I brought it up here. You know, Next all time. things, and I don't know anything about your other issue, but all things involved in reference to this case, all the going around, the statement that you wrote, Where's the statement at? The statement that you wrote. The same statement. I didn't read the statement. I don't know what the statement said. What did it say? Uh, it's just very brief. I uh, gave Jessica a property like I gave her a computer and everything. Right. Yes, sir. Whose is this bag? It's Jessica's. I just I didn't think, think about it because I used it as a gym bag and she let me use it. I understand what you're saying. Matthew, a police officer. Yes, sir. I understand. You're a police officer, Matthew. You know we are held to a higher standard than anybody else. I understand. You know people don't 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 expect us to make mistakes and they don't realize we're human. I understand that. Yes, you sir. understand that. I should have been smarter about it. You work out a lot, don't you? You stay in shape. You're in good shape, right? Trust me. You have two bags. Did you swap your stuff in between? Yeah, I don't have the other one anymore. This would have been your only gym bag. So how would you not do the contents of the bag? If this was your gym bag, man. I have no excuse. 
I, like you said, I should have should have thought about it and brought it up here. That's like having two cars. Yes, sir. If you use two cars and you get in the other one and it's out of gas, then you're not know it's out of gas. You're right. Because you use two cars, right? Yes, sir. If you were using this, being slap full, and I say it was slap full, I mean it was. I want to say just just a guess of probably thirty or forty articles of clothing in it. You would have known. I mean, it almost looked like when whoever packed this bag had packed this bag to move. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Says Matthew Boynton, January 9, 2017. I was advised to complete a statement on a previous date by Lieutenant Yancey. Jessica Lester Dash Boynton's property was already previously returned to her by my stepdad, Charles McDaniel Jr. Shortly after Jessica got out of this hospital, uh, the dining room table, along with other items, were picked up by Kathy Zellner for Jessica. The remaining items such as Hope Chess clothing and other miscellaneous items were returned to Jessica. I do not have any other items of Jessica's. This is Matthew Boynton. Is that your statement? Yes, sir. What is that, Matthew? That's Jessica's bag. Jessica's retainer. You understand you didn't buy that? I understand. That does not make it community property. I understand. That makes it her property. Yes, sir. That you're in possession of. Yes, sir. I understand. Detective Hayes points out that there is no way that the bag would be filled with articles of Jessica's clothing if Boynton had been using it as a gym bag. Boynton acts like a little boy that has been called into the principal's office. He knows he's in trouble, but he's hoping he can get out of it. You can tell from the way Hayes sighs and runs his hand through his hair that he does not want to be in this position. Given the rampant corruption and nepotism that is later unearthed in this department, this is most likely going to have a negative impact on his career, no matter which way this investigation goes. The bag was turned into us. We have possession of the bag. Yes, sir. We have evidence <coughs> that says it came out of your storage room. Is that true? Yes, sir. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, sir. I said I was just done with my part of the Do you believe? Do you believe that statement to be accurate and true? Not now. Did you believe it then? No, sir. Hey, you water or something, Matthew? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yes, sir. I got some right here. Thank you. All right. I'm going to be right back. Sorry, man. I had to smoke a cigarette. You're good. Man, dude, man, why? I, I, I'm walking around outside. Why would you say you didn't have the damn bag when you had it? You know you can't give a sworn statement and lie on it. I know, Sarge. Why would you do that, Matthew? Oh, it was a bag, man. It wasn't. It's not like it was. 
Talk to me, man. I mean, help me understand. Oh, Sarge, I swear to God, I know that was, that was hard to believe, but I didn't think about that bag. Otherwise, I wouldn't have broke, I wouldn't have broke, I said, hold on, little T. I got something, let me go get it. I swear, I wouldn't have done that. Because I've got two kids, three and one. I wouldn't jeopardize that over a bag. If, I'm telling you, Sarge. Hayes returns and angrily demands to know why Boynton would lie about something as trivial as a bag. Again, Boynton tries to claim it's all a misunderstanding. However, Boynton's girlfriend states in later interviews that she had pointed out the bag several times and that Boynton thought it was funny going as far as to make jokes about the shooting. If I would have thought about it then, I would have said something. But you knew you had I the bag. I, Did you not know you had the bag? I'm sorry, I, my mind's right. I don't, I fucked up, I know I didn't. I should have turned it in. But not only because I'm a cop, because I should have, because it was just, because even if she let me use it. It was hurts. the right thing to do, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. If I, I mean, if I would have thought about it then, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have messed up and been in this position because of my kids. But why didn't you turn the bag in when you damn moved? I don't know. I don't know what because I was thinking. Because it was too, I okay, I was thinking then. Did you think he was going to get in trouble if you turned it in late? I, I guess. I don't know what I was going through. Mind. What do you think should happen now? I know that's probably going to happen. No, that's not what I asked you. So, what do you think should happen? I just. Where's my kids? My kids are fucking daddy's boys, man. I would have thought about it. I would have done it. Of all, of all the stuff that you, you see about you, you know if you were in possession of something that belonged to her, you know you should have, you could have brought it to me. You know I'm going to do the right thing. You know I have to do the right thing. I would have took care of it. I would have gotten the bag back to her. But when you knew you had the bag and you didn't do anything about it, man, you put me in a situation where I, got, I don't have any other choice. I'm clear. I'm clear. There's no excuse for it. Here. I know it's got that on there. I know. I, it's, I just, it's so hard. Like, well, I, I love working here. I know you and do. I, and I, I, was, I asked you, I was so scared to come to work every day. Why? Because every time I did, you know, it was always uh, 1179 or 1022 to. 42 come up here. I mean, it's always something. I, I, I don't know. Maybe I thought if I brought it up here, I was going to get fired and whatever. Man, I don't know. I'm but, so young. And stupid. But Matthew, you know, doing the right thing regardless, it doesn't matter. If you do the right thing, you can live with yourself. Nine times out of ten, I, I do. I, don't, I mean, that's the way I was raised. But you, you know that. You know that you have to do the right thing. And when you found, even if, if you found a bag, you should have said, hey, Hey LT, hey Sar, hey whoever. I got something, man. Stop for a minute and talk to me. I don't know what I was thinking then. I don't know if it's because I was scared. I mean, I, I, come, I told you, I come to work every day scared. Now. There's no excuse. I'm not trying to make one for myself. I, mean, I know I'm obviously not employed anymore. It's just like, the only thing I can think about now is my kids, man. Kids. <laughs> Boynton is crying, having removed all of his gear and placing it on the table. He claims he has been afraid every day coming into work that this would be discovered and whimpers over how this is going to affect his boys. Hayes tells him that things would have been taken care of if Boynton had come in on his own, but now he is forced into a corner. Daddy's boys. You know, the baby is actually like he's my own. And I'm not setting a good example right now. I always try to show my kids what's right. But you know when you when you swear an oath, we swear that we're gonna uphold the law. Yes sir. Regardless. And you know you can't lie to, you can't lie in an investigation. You know that. I don't know what I was thinking, like I said, I don't know if I was scared or what, I don't know what was going to my mind then. Does that make it right? No, it doesn't. I know that. 
know this is everything I've ever worked for, like out the door. My main concern is my kids, man, because I've got I've got primary custody over them, and this is gonna set me back if I get locked up for this. I'm gonna go down the scene every other weekend. She's not gonna take care of them like she's supposed to. Like she's supposed to put them on her insurance. But, I had to do that. But Matthew, if you did no. what you were supposed to do, we would not be here in this situation. You think I want to be here? No, sir. I would be rather be anywhere else than be here. Clear. But if you had done what you were supposed to do, we would not even have to be having this conversation. You would have to worry about it. Yes, sir. But you know that we have to do, we have to do the right thing. We have to do what people pay us to do. You know that. You know that, especially with me and Lieutenant Yancey, you've known us a long time. Yeah. I, just, I don't want to let lose the, the primary custody of my kids. Like, I know, I mean, no matter where I go now, I'm not really going to get a good job now, but like, the main focus is my kids, man. Life is not over with. Everything happens for a reason. Just hang tight, okay? Left alone again, Boynton alternates between fiddling with his gear and using his phone, a luxury that no one else receives while in custody, and seems resigned to his fate. It's clear that he knows he will have to resign. It's a sad commentary that he was able to walk free on attempted murder and that Jessica will only receive a small feeling of justice over a comparatively trial offense. After her recovery, Jessica lost custody of her sons. All evidence supporting her being a victim of attempted murder were either not allowed to be heard or were quickly dismissed, an almost inevitable outcome given the friendship between the sheriff and the judge. Boynton claims that he was afraid she would harm the children and herself, and even though a full psych evaluation contradicted this, Jessica was only allowed to see her sons for four hours a week under the supervision of an armed police officer. After the events of this video, Boynton was charged with making false statements and violating his oath of office, both felonies. Holding to the set pattern, he was not indicted and four months later he was hired as a reserve officer in another city. In summer of 2018, their oldest son complained that his father had hurt him. Jessica informed Child Services and after nearly a year of investigating and having both boys examined by child psychologists, it was advised that the boys have no further contact with their father. Boynton plans to fight this order in court, which inspires two questions. What are his chances of winning? now that he no longer has the backing of his corrupt family and police connections, and perhaps even more chilling, will he fall back on his violent ways to get what he wants? <laughs>